What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of Beauty and the Beast, where I, the beauty, talk to the beast. And <laughs> did I did I say that wrong? Where I, yes. the beast, talk to my wife, Kate, Peanut Kate. And uh, we discuss with you guys what happened in episode six of HBO's The Last, the last of Us. We watched it last night. We didn't get a chance to do a reaction until this morning. We got a lot of things to, to say about this episode, and, and it's really, um, I guess, heartbreaking considering what we felt about the last episode, episode five, with uh, Sam and um, how that went and, and showing the bloater and, and, you know, the visceral action and stuff. Um, this episode sees Ellie and Joel finally track across the, the I guess, the U.S. and and find Tommy, and um, it, it has... You know, facets and, and echoes of the game. A lot of things are changed here. And um, I think it. some of it changed for the worse, would you say? Uh, yeah, a lot of it did. My, my, I want to start off flat out. If you change a person's original character and it has a real meaning and, and it's, it benefits the story, then I'm all for it. But Neil Druckmann seems to just hate white people. He just hate, it seems like he hates white people. He changed Sarah. He, he changed Tommy's wife uh, into this um, black female with, with dreads for no reason. There was really no reason. And it's like playing the game. Yeah, I'm, I'm going right into it. This was not a good episode for me. Uh, it seems like they're really retconning the original story and characters for what they really want to happen in, in part two. And I'll let you get started. On, on you know the beginning of the episode and, and what was happening and how you feel um, about these changes and, and, and the way that the characters act now compared to how they would have acted in the game. It really drives me insane. Last night was one of my least favorite episodes. Yeah, I, um, I really don't like how it doesn't feel like Joel and Ellie have chemistry at all. Um, like in the beginning of the episode, even through the middle, I... I didn't feel it. I don't feel like they're like their characters from the game. At the end, it was a little better. It was a little, you know, kind of felt like they were kind of getting more chemistry, but they should have already had it by now. Yeah, and not just that. Ellie is an incredibly unlikable character in this game. I was just going to say that. I was like, she... I mean, in the show. <laughs> she, in she's... the show, yeah. She's mean to everybody. She curses. Every other word, she cusses. And she doesn't do that in the game. She's not mean to people in the game, and she doesn't boss Joel around in the game. Oh, in this episode, when um, when uh, Tommy um, discusses with Joel that he has a baby coming, Ellie's sitting at the table, and she's talking smack next to Joel. Joel's silent and timid, and so she tells Tommy, congratulations. Then she gives Joel the order to say congratulations, then Joel says it. I'm like, this never happened. They're emasculating Joel. They're making him a weak character and, and, and adding all this retconning to justify what they're going to do to Joel in part two. I really don't like this Ellie. She's a terrible uh, character. Uh, when she met um, Tommy's girlfriend or his fiance or whatever, she was sitting there and saying, I'm smarter than Tommy. That's not something Ellie would have ever said. No. Okay, no. and then this woman is like giving her the, you know, okay, maybe you are smart. I'm like, what? This is totally insane. Um, uh, Ellie's directing Joel where they should be going now. She's the one in front. Joel talking to Tommy, explaining to Tommy that he's so weak now that Ellie had to save him. I was just gonna say that. I was like, that is not how Joel would act. That's he not how so he acted weak. in the game. He cried. Yeah. Like, he never cried in the game. He was tough in the game. He just had a reason why he didn't want to take her. And, and it's it's, it's making know. me not want to finish watching it. Because not only did uh, Neil Druckmann do to Joel in part two, with many of the fans hate it. And, and some people, my older brother included, was like, man, you just need to play the game. It's a fun game. I talk to people at work. They're like, just play the game for the game. That's my standard. And it's like, if, if, if I love something, I named my daughter Ellie. If we had named our son Joel, it would have been because we liked the character from the game. And seeing what they did to him in part two, the way they dumbed him down. They dumbed him down the way they're dumbing this Joel down in season one. Joel, he's not aware. 
He's not strong. Ellie has to save him. Ellie has to pull the trigger. Didn't he say Ellie had to pull the trigger to save him and kill him? And he was just he, too, he was uh, too frail. Slow. Yeah, he was too slow and deaf to be able to kill Sam. So Ellie had to do it. She's only 14. This kind of it's stuff. Just... Let me just say, this type of shit never happened in the game. And it doesn't feel like the game. And and seeing this, this new dichotomy, this new direction that they want to take Ellie and Joel. This is not Joel. This is super duper beta Joel. This is somebody who lived down the street from Joel, had the same name, who was a super soft, weak dude. Joel in the game was strong and silent. He was driven. He knew what he wanted to do. And when this girl, when they developed this kind of chemistry and love for one another, he acted like her father and he would do anything to protect her. This Joel won't even have that capability. He'll be weak and she'll have to protect him and she'll have to tell him how to survive. I mean... They changed so many aspects of this episode. Joel didn't fight the guy and fall over the edge and get stabbed through the stomach. Somebody ran up to him and stabbed him at the university. And immediately Ellie's screaming to Joel, get on the horse and, and so they can get out of there. And as Joel is, you know, riding away, she's aiming back shooting. She's the heroine now? Is she Ray from Star Wars? I feel like yeah. Kathleen Kennedy took over this, this, this project because the first, you know, one or two episodes, it really, really felt like the game. I felt like the characters could end up being the characters from the game. But now I feel like as as the, it's like what the critical drinker said, as this is going on and further and further, their plan is to take away some of the core fundamental um, uh, personality traits of these characters and change them. Because what they did to Joel in part two was so out of character for Joel. It didn't make sense to the gamers because people played part one. We know what Joel said. We know how he acted. And so in part two, when he just walks into a room with 20 people he's never met before, and like, oh, hum, hey, guys, how you doing? And gets killed. You know, that's not Joel. They want to create a Joel in season one that has those kind of traits, that he's a bonehead. He has to be led by Ellie. And of course, they do the stupidest crap in this episode. They have the scene where Ellie in Tommy's town sees her lover from part uh, from part two looking at her for, for no reason. No reason. This girl's just looking at Ellie very, you know, strangely. Like she can just smell the lesbian energy. Women don't do that. And of course, Ellie's like, what are you looking at going back and forth? Thanks a lot, Neil. You suck. And then they have this whole scene with a feminine hygiene product. That was incredibly pointless. I don't understand why they put that in there. Like, it added nothing. It it wasn't in the game. It's not. It's not. You know, necessary for this storyline either. It's just real foolish. They're making me not like the the show. I'm starting to feel like the show was like an extension of part two. I'm starting to feel like they they're retconning Joel. This Joel is emasculated. He's weak. He's a crybaby. I mean. He's a real scumbag and he's a liar. You know, he's telling everybody that, you know, Tess is okay. She's fine. Joel in the game would have, you know, I think he would have been more honest and said things didn't work out. He's a liar. He's weak. He's depending on this 14-year-old girl to save his life constantly. And it's not even somebody who's, like, likable. Ellie is not likable in this in this show. Which makes less sense. Like her. Yeah, I do not like her at all. I don't like how she interacts with people. I don't like how she cusses every other word that she says. It's not how she acted. I don't like how she seems so oblivious to danger. And she's, like, not scared at all. Not scared. It's like She's Ray. For you guys who uh, hear me uh, uh, referencing Ray from Star Wars, Kathleen Kennedy said the Force is female. She's another one of these strong feminists like Neil Druckmann. And um, she created this um, character model of a female that didn't go through any any type of character development. Ray didn't go through any real training. Ray didn't go through any loss or any strife or trauma and somehow ended up more powerful than Luke Skywalker, Darth Vader, more powerful than the Emperor. And she just standing there swirling lightsabers like it's nothing without any training. I feel like that's what they're doing with, with Ellie. Ellie in the game needed protection. Ellie in the game was constantly afraid. Ellie in the game did not want to be killed. She, she knew the, the dangers of the world. And this Ellie doesn't seem to have any of those traits. This Ellie seems to be completely oblivious to, to fear, to danger. And she seems to be the type of character that can do anything 
including the role of being a Joel-like character, even though Joel is right next to her, being a complete loser. This is terrible, what Neil Druckmann is doing to the fans of this series. I got a Last of Us poster right there. And it's like, um, I feel like this would be tantamount to losing a family member and having a picture on the wall of them, and but someone making a documentary about them and it's completely not who they were, you know? You, you see the, docu- the the Mike Tyson show that just came out. Mike Tyson said that stuff didn't happen. And people are watching it. Oh, Mike Tyson. He says it didn't happen. This didn't happen to, to Joel in the game. You know, there's no reason to take every white character who's straight and turn him into something else. You know, if you're just checking boxes to check them, it comes across as an agenda. It comes across as an agenda. I'm a black dude. I'm married to a white woman. Of course, I love black people. Of course, I love white people. But if you're doing it just to check boxes, you come off as a virtue signaler, you come off as a person with an agenda, and you come off as a person because it never goes the other way. It only goes one direction. You come off as a person who does not like a certain group of people who happen to be straight, because we see a lot of this stuff in the show, and who happen to be white. And I don't know what Neil Druckmann's problem is, you know, his feminist feminist frequency stuff with Anita Sarkeesian, but it's obviously deep in his bones. And, and I think that he's going to be the iceberg that takes down not Naughty Dog. I really do. Because they've given him so much power. He's, um, you know, second in command of the entire company now. So yeah. he's climbed that, that corporate ladder and, and he's going to continue to inject this garbage very similar to what's going on with Disney. You know, injecting these agendas constantly and people are going to get fed up with it. Give me a good story. Give me a good character. And when people get used to it, oh, we'll change everything. You know, this is similar to what's going on with The Little Mermaid. While the movie might be a good movie, I know there's going to be hundreds of thousands of people who aren't going to see it just because of the agenda that's been forced down people's throat. I uh, I can honestly say, honestly say if I never played the game, I still wouldn't like these characters. I wouldn't like this show. I, I would think, you know, a couple scenes were cool and they did something awesome, but then overall i i do not like ellie i just don't I can don't you like imagine if this was the show we watched before we had our daughter her name would not be ellie well i i probably wouldn't want to play the game if the show came out before the game because it's I, it's they're shoehorning so much of an agenda and so much beta male garbage and so much feminism and, and so many feminine hygiene products. We need to at least have four feminist hygiene, feminine hygiene products, and even in every season. What the hell is that? Name one top tier TV show that does that. Because they're checking boxes. Yeah, yeah I never, I never seen that in a TV show where people just openly pick up show a, a, and talk a feminine about it. product, and the camera looks at it like you're playing Doom, and he picks up a new gun. You know, on Doom, you pick up a new gun, and and you look at the gun. They're doing that with feminine, feminine hygiene products. What the hell is wrong with these people? This is a terrible episode. I implore you to watch it and let us know what you think about it. Um, I don't, I mean, these people don't feel like the real characters. Tommy doesn't feel like Tommy because Tommy was a white dude. Tommy is not. He's something. Yeah, I didn't like how they fought either. They didn't fight in the no, game. They didn't. they didn't get mad at each other and storm off and act like children. Yep. That's, yep. Not, that's not what happened. Yeah. So, I mean, they want to create this division and, and, and it's... It's an agenda, and it feels like crap, you know. Um, I think uh, Sam and what's his brother? What's his brother's name? Is it? Um, Harry? It's not Harry, is it? No, um, Sam and. Um... I'm trying to think. Oh shoot! No, and the, she's one with me, so she forgot it too. But Sam and his brother, two black characters from the game, that were great. It worked out really well. They changed it. Yeah. If they, it worked. If they changed it and made them something else, I'd be just as frustrated as I am right now. If you create something and people buy into that and people come along for that and they're like, this isn't a great story and we really, we we subscribe to this. And then you say, well, you know what? We're going to do a TV show on it. We're going to change everything. We're going to change these characters. You might rub people the wrong way, especially if you're doing it all in one direction and then putting as much liberal nonsense in it as possible. Stuff that people don't need to see. Changing things for absolutely no reason. And I mean, I honestly do believe the more and more of this stuff is being um, pumped into the ether and Naughty Dog, people are going to eventually turn away from them because there's only so much you can take of people standing there wagging their finger at you, telling you what you need to think and how you need to feel instead of letting you just be yourself. This is nonsense. It's crap. This episode was complete garbage. Um, 
They didn't have the scene where Ellie ran away because she heard Tommy and Joel, uh, you know, discussing her staying with Tommy. She just, yeah. um, you know, was upset. And the next day, Joel wimped out and he was like, um, here's the other option. And she just, of course, in her wonderful personality way, says, let's go to Joel. Yeah. And it's like, even if she overheard them talking, this Ellie in this show, I don't think would have cared. I think she's just she just cares she, about she, herself. She would have been she upset. Just, yeah, yeah. I, I just I don't I don't know. It, none of this makes sense. It's like they're <laughs> trying to bring in things from the game, but it's not working because they're changing the characters and who they are and how they interact with. I people. don't see how Joel it's has any love working. for Ellie at all at this point. Yeah, you know she pulled the trigger and, and you know and saved him and stuff. But you know that can happen when you, when you're with someone who who's keeping you alive. Chances are, if you see a bunch of other people coming, you're going to try to fight for the person who's keeping you alive. But she's very unlikable. She's arrogant. She's a know-it-all. She talks to adults like she's older than them. She has no respect. And I don't know. I'm honestly just waiting for it to be over. I'm waiting for it to be over. Uh, I think I'll be able to breathe a sigh of relief and say, you know, this is Neil Druckmann. This is to be expected with a Neil Druckmann production. He will inject as much twisted foolishness you know, this dude is like a, a, a commercial for the Democrat Party, like the super left. We'll put as many people of color in it. You put as many genders as possible. You're going to uh, go as, you know, and attack as many straight white people as possible. Remove them because, you know, equality and representation. And it's just, I'm sick of this shit. Just, just make the product the way it was. That's, it, it got over 200 Game of the Year awards. Yeah. The way that it was. And, and. Yep. I understand, you know, the acting of episode three. I understand how great of an acting job it was, but that wasn't needed to push this story along. That was basically an art exhibition by these people because it had it was not germane to the story at all. Ellie never met him. He was dead by the time Ellie and Joel got there. So it was just, hey, let's flesh out this character because, hey, that's a big old box we can check. And so they fleshed him out just to kill him. It, it was like stupid. Like they could have showed, you know, their relationship, but they could have shortened it and still allowed him to meet Ellie and allowed that kind of stuff to happen in the I show. I mean, the way I feel, I, been I don't mind them showing, um, you know, his relationship and, and how they met. But right. but in the game, Bill was a badass. So I would have preferred them, you know, the little scene with him outside shooting at people, you know. That wasn't the best scene in, on Earth. With him being a badass and having technology in a bunker, I would have preferred to see him actually using that and, and maybe going out and scouting or, or taking out a bunch of, you know, uh, you infected. know, infected or, or, you know, bandits come in there to raid them, raiders. I would like to see him handle it, handle things like that to really make the character in the game make more sense. But, you know, it is what it is. Neil Druckmann sucks. Um, that's how I feel about him. Uh, I've felt that way for years since he decided to murder one of the greatest video game characters in, in, in the last, you know, 15, 20 years. It would be like playing God of War and in the very next episode, um, you, you show up as a new god, Hades, and you beat the crap out of God of War with a with an axe and smack his head all in and, and destroy him. And then you play as Hades for the rest of the game, but it's a God of War game. It's just, it's really, really stupid. That's how I feel. You guys can tell I'm pretty agitated by this episode last night we were watching it we were both like this is complete bullshit it's it's worthless it's it's leftist nonsense and i'm sick of neil Druckmann. he's gonna really really um i mean let me just say this i'm super excited to see what he does with the uncharted game it's gonna have all this crap infused into it a series that, ne that was just by the book action romance is gonna have all this lgbt stuff all this all the white characters are about to get x'd out and, and, and it's like, I'm sick of this crap. People trying to force you how to think. They're trying to force you to think the way they think instead of saying, hey, look, we're all equal. We, we should all be able to enjoy life. You shouldn't be persecuting people based on the way they look. You shouldn't be persecuting a person just because they're straight. Nobody's persecuting you know anybody else because they're not straight. So you shouldn't be persecuting people because they're straight or because they were born looking like you. You know what I'm saying? And I'm really, really sick of Neil Druckmann. I, I'm sure you guys can tell I'm sick of this fucking guy. Anyway. That's how I feel. You got anything else to add? I'm waiting to see how else they mess it up. <laughs> yeah, That's they're, it. They're, they're really going to mess it up. I, I'm not looking forward to seeing how close they are to the game now. I'm looking forward to seeing how much they mess up. Well, the the very last scene of the game is when Ellie looks at Joel and says, 
Okay. When she asks him, um, everything you said happened, did it didn't happen the way you said it did? And he says, I promise it did. And she like looks and she's like, okay, that's not going to work with this character. Every time I see her, I want to use a slingshot and shoot my TV screen or the, 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 the projector screen because I'm so sick of her. She's so unlikable. So we'll see how that works out. Some of the, the best set pieces of the game didn't exist here in this show. Um, so I think we're probably down to like maybe the last two episodes. I think we might have two episodes left. There's probably eight episodes. So we'll see yeah. what they do. But as it is right now, there's been a few highlights. Um, I don't think it's an absolutely terrible show. But it's like when you see so much of the, the message being injected into a, a show, it just makes you want to throw up. And I'm just I'm so sick of Neil Druckmann. I guess you guys know how I feel. Let us know how you feel in the yeah. comments below. Did you watch episode six of The Last of Us? Uh, am I overthinking things? Am I overreacting? Uh, do you feel the way that I do? That they need to just leave people alone? You know, they don't need to make a white Black Panther for representation. They don't need to make, you know, they don't need to change characters just to check a box. It doesn't do anything besides make people feel like you're checking boxes, you're virtue signaling. And I'm just so sick of it. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Until then, this has been another wonderful episode of Beauty and the Beast. Hit that thumbs up button to show support for the channel. Share it on social media with all your family and friends. I'm the Beastly Gamer. And I'm Kate. And we'll see you guys next time.